Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Data Logic with Shivam. Today we will discuss 10 Power BI interview questions which was asked to me in one of the HCL interview round. Before moving forward, I would request you to like this video and subscribe to my channel. There are a lot more real interview question videos which was asked in different companies are in queue. So please stay tuned. Now let's move ahead. So our first question was, can I use any Power BI workspace to create a deployment pipeline in Power BI services. In Power BI services, the workspace type for creating a deployment pipeline specifically revolves around licensing rather than the workspace itself. Following are the requirements, premium capacity or premium per user license. Deployment pipeline are a premium feature in Power BI. This means the workspace involved in your deployment pipeline that is de development, test and production need to be part of a premium capacity or a have a premium per user license assigned. So let's move to next question. Where can I find Power BI deployment pipeline option? In Power BI, the deployment pipeline option can be found within the Power BI service portal. So you can follow below step. You can go to Power BI workspace where your report or data set is located. Within this workspace, locate the deployment pipeline option. You can typically find it in the left hand navigation pane or under the workspace setting. Click on the de deployment pipeline option to access the deployment pipeline feature. Here you can create manage and monitor deployment pipeline for your Power BI content. Now moving to next question. How to set up Power BI deployment pipeline and where, where we can change the connection when we move data from dev to QA, QA to production. So this is very important question. This second part where we can change the connection when we move data from dev to QA or QA to prod. Okay. Many times interview ask this question. Okay. Because this is something which is if you have worked on deployment pipeline, then only you can able to give the answer. So. First, for first question, how to set up Power BI deployment pipeline? We can create a deployment pipeline from the workspace flyout. Select deployment pipeline, click on create pipeline, provide name to deployment pipeline and by default there will be three stages, dev, QM, production and put you can create up to 10 stages. Okay. Then assign workspace for those deployment pipeline. Okay. And then deploy content from one stage to another. Now this is the first part of the question which is how to set up Power BI deployment pipeline. Now the second part where we can change the connection when we move data from dev to QA or QA to production. So in deployment pipe deployment tools each stage is will have different database or different connection. Hence we can change the connection in deployment rules. Just remember always in deployment rules we can change the connection. Moving to next question, is there, is there any way to extract the value in card which is selected on slicer in Power BI? So here we can use selected value DAX function. So we can take the selected value, uh, we can create one variable selected slicer and there we can use the selected value DAX and we can mention the uh, column. for which which uh, which column which is added into the slicer and which value we wanted to show into the card so here i am taking region country you can uh, in your case it can be anything okay then i am applying if condition where if if it is blank so here this will handle the case where no slicer item is selected so it will provide no selection if it is not blank then it will provide me the selected value which is in slicer okay once this measure will be created i will add this measure into the card visual okay now moving to next question i have three visuals and one slicer and edit edit interaction is enabled but one visual is not working according to the slicer selection what could be the scenario so we can check for any issue in the data model such as relationship is not present between them or data inconsistencies. The other 
Other options can be check if there are any visual level filter applied to the non-responsive visual that override the slicer selection. Okay. Now moving to next question. What are the advantage, advantages and disadvantages of bi-directional relationship? So advantages, filter can flow in both direction, enabling you to slice and dice data more effectively. In complex model with multiple relationship between tables, bi-directional filtering can reduce the need for additional DEX measures. You can easily filter both fact and dimension table at the same time without needing separate relationship or complex text function. Now disadvantages. It can slow down report with large data set due to additional filtering calculation. Filter may propagate unexpectedly. For instance, filtering a dimension table could unexpectedly filter fact table in way that are not desired, leading to confusion data output. It can increase the risk of circular, circular relationship which can cause model errors and it can make model harder to understand and maintain over time. Now moving to next question. What scope cross filter DEX function will work? What if we have already relationship available? Okay. So now first scenario, if we have temporarily, cha temporarily changes relationship behavior. So it allow you to override the default filter direction single or bi-directional set in the data model but only within a specific DEX expression or measure. Works only on existing relationship. It works if there is an existing relationship between the tables. You cannot use cross filter on tables without a defined relationship in the model. Existing single directional relationship. If there is a single directional relationship between two tables, Cross filter can temporarily make it bidirectional within a measure, but it won't affect other calculation. Existing bidirectional relationship. If a bidirectional relationship already exists, cross filter can still modify it. Example, turning it into one way or none, providing flexibility in specific calculation. Now moving to next question. If I have two different fact tables, which schema should they belong to? Can a star schema have two fact tables? So we can simply uh, simply say yes, a st star schema can have two fact tables connected to the same dimension tables. Each fact table would focus on a specific metric or event type. Imagine a star schema with a sales fact table and an inventory fact table, both sharing dimension like product and date. So we will use star schema if the fact tables share the same dimension table and have a relatively simple relationship. I have also added one more point. We will use snowflake schema if the fact tables have different dimension sets, complex relationship between dimension and need for higher data normalization. The next question is from data warehouse, but I have included into this video itself. What is factless fact tables in data warehousing and have you used faceless fact tables? These tables focus on relationship and events between dimensions, not numerical measure. They don't contain any aggregation or calculation. They capture only occurrences. For example, website visit. Think of it this way. A regular fact table track how many book each person borrows from a library. Numbers which is okay. A factless fact table track who borrowed which book. Events but not the numbers. Okay. Moving to next question. How can I keep the same slicer selection while navigating between different bookmark in Power BI? So for each bookmark, click on the three dot next to the bookmark name. Deselect data if it is selected. This option control the slicer and filter settings. Now ensure display and current page are selected to maintain the visual and the page layout. By deselecting data for your bookmark, you ensure that the slicer selection are not altered when switching between bookmarks. This allow you to maintain the same slicer selection across different bookmarks. So now these are the question which I wanted to share with you and which was asked to me in an in HCL interview uh, round. 
I can mention the link to download this PPT. Once again, please like this video and subscribe to my channel that will motivate me to create these kind of videos. As I said, I have some couple of videos as well which is pending and which are in queue. Nowadays I am not getting so much time because of my current responsibilities. But yeah, I will try to release those videos as soon as possible. Till the time, stay tuned on this channel. Thank you.